are ending this week with Deep Woods Horror Stories. As always, on Saturday and Sunday we'll post multiple hours long compilation videos, so do stay tuned for that. So sit back and relax, and do hit that like button and subscribe, it really helps with YouTube algorithm. And now, story time. I used to work for the U.S. Forest Service and sometimes worked with an older gentleman that had lots of interesting stories from his many years of life. But by far the most chilling tale was from when he was working in a very secluded area of wilderness and was walking through the forest when a thunderstorm hit. He had seen an opening in the hill a little while back and headed to it to take shelter. Once inside he shined his flashlight to check he wasn't going to wake up a bear or something and found the skeleton of a man, sitting in a lawn chair, with a rifle rigged up so he had been able to shoot himself. The skeleton was still wearing jeans and a flannel shirt. I've met a lot of bullshitters in my time and this guy wasn't one, he'd honestly just led an interesting life. So I worked at a ranch in southern Arizona, right on the border. I didn't really consider it to be secluded because I had horses and cows. In hindsight, I guess it was really lonely because sometimes they'd talk back to me. Anyways, doing fence borders with a guy from another camp and we had to go down into this dry river bed. As we round the bend we see a bunch of beat up trucks sitting there armed to the teeth. Turns out we ran into some kind of big deal for a cartel. The other guy told me to keep steady and we just walked straight through them on our horses. Everyone staring at us, looking like they were ready to shoot us up if we made one false move. I asked about it when we got to the other side without turning into Swiss cheese and the more experienced rancher told me, the cartel only cares about border patrol and cops. They know this is a ranch, and they know we roam around here and they know we don't say much. Reason being, if they ever assumed the ranchers were the snitches, they could easily find our little ranch houses. Only had one person to so many acres. Could have been off and left there for many days before someone noticed. With all that in mind, I had a very passive relationship with those kind from then on. My boyfriend has a story like this about living in Albuquerque. He didn't have a car at the time and had to walk everywhere, which is tedious and long in that city. One day he found himself on course to walk through some sort of gang dispute, tattooed, armed, scary looking guys staring at each other across the street. In ABQ everyone puts on a don't give AF, no fear front, and if you break that, you're likely in for trouble. He had to just walk on through, turning back might have gotten him singled out, so he kept going and didn't say a word, didn't look at them. They silently watched him pass, and all was well. It probably helped that he was also brown, like them. He called me immediately after it happened to tell me how crazy and nerve-wracking it was. I have a very white, very sweet slash shy guy friend who moved to ABQ for his girlfriend and didn't know about putting on the front. He got picked on and beaten up and mugged almost immediately. Poor guy. Lasted a month before they broke up and he moved back to Colorado. I think part of it, in this context, is that if you're not afraid it's assumed you're packing. Sketchy gang members slash drug dealers a la Breaking Bad, only care about cops, other gang members slash drug dealers, and if you mess with them or make yourself out to be a target. I was running on a logging road in central Wisconsin and stopped because I felt like I was being watched. It was just an instinctive feeling. That's when I noticed a large wolf step out of the forest about 50 yards ahead of me. It was just staring and I stared back. After about 30 seconds of us checking each other out it just slipped back into the woods and was gone. I kept running in the same direction but never really shook the feeling of being watched. 
I guess it's not that scary because wolves rarely attack people, but you betcha it was creepy enough being alone out there. My fiancé and I went hiking up a mountain in the Pacific Northwest last summer. It's perpetually muddy due to a large number of waterfalls along the sides of the trail, so there's no way you can avoid getting at least a little dirty. Around an hour and a half up the trail, we passed two men wearing black suits, black hats, black glasses, holding black leather briefcases and wearing black dress shoes. Completely clean dress shoes. And immaculately clean, pressed pants. Not a spot of dirt or a wrinkle on either of their clothes. As we passed each other, one of them whispered something in German. I looked back at them and they were both standing still and looking back at us, staring. One of the creepiest things that has ever happened to me, and I've had my fair share of strange experiences. My mom's oldest brother went missing on a hitchhiking trip from Boston to San Francisco to see his long-distance girlfriend when he was 19. The last contact they had with him was when he was in Colorado. 40 plus years later, there's still no answers. My mom did end up finding and contacting the girlfriend last year. She said he did end up making it San Francisco, which was news to all of us, but she was in Boston for a funeral at the time he showed up. He left her a note saying he was staying somewhere and to call when she was home. But no one knows what happened after that. When my mom got off the phone with her, she sobbed for 20 minutes and kept saying she didn't know why she was crying. I told her that she's held all these emotions in for over 40 years and just got one giant step closer to finding her brother. I hope in her lifetime she can get some closure. So out where I live it's just outside of a town nestled at the bottom of mountains, for Zura information I live in Australia, and it's not too secluded since I live with my family and you'll generally come across someone's property every 500 meters but there are some stretches where you won't see a house for a km. One night my mom and I are coming home pretty late at night and we were just talking and listening to the radio. We come around a corner and we both saw this creature that I still don't know what it is till this day. But it had the body the size of a medium dog, mangy looking black fur, an almost abnormally large head, big green eyes, which was the first thing I noticed, but most weirdly an almost impossibly long and thin neck, like it shouldn't be able to support the large head. My mother and I are cussing like sailors at this point and make a U-turn around to get a better look at it and within 10 seconds there was no trace of it. Normally I'd brush this off as probably a wild dog but the body just didn't look like a dig and it was too big for a cat, even a wild one. The real scary part is that my family and I have seen that maybe two to three times now almost exclusively late at night. However my so's father has said that he's also seen it twice, once at night and once at daytime and I get the feeling we're not the only people in town to have seen it. Driving through the middle of Montana one night, going about 100 miles per hour, passed something on the side of the interstate that looks like a mangled body. Turned around at the next pass, came back. Definitely a body. Put my lights on it and tried to call 911 on my cell. No reception. Got in the car to see if I could pick up cell reception, lights were still on, nothing there but the blood splatters. Drove away quick. This was one of those places in Montana where Therese nothing for as far as you can see, maybe 300 miles east of the Idaho state line, it's been maybe 12 years since this happened. I was parked less than 10 yards from the body, and am pretty sure it was human, I got out of the car and walked towards it until I recognized a head, turned away from me, and a hand, the rest of the body was turned away from me at like a one position. Less than 10 yards at that point. Going back to the car is quick, because I'm more scared now, lean in the driver's window and grab the phone off the center console. Dial and no service at all. Jump in the car and look out the windshield. Nobody, 
If it was yotes, they were quick and strong. Maybe a mountain lion, but still, had to have been very quick and very quiet. I never called the police when I got reception because I wasn't entirely legal at the time. I had just gotten out of trouble in Washington by joining the army, long story there. I was on an outward bound trip in the White River National Forest in Colorado. A part of OB trips is a solo, which can be anywhere from 12 to 48 hours in which the participants are by themselves with a journal and some snacks. I set up a sweet tent in a tree grouping. It had rained the night before so the ground was pretty soft. After setting up I walked around the area. I felt pretty tired, and decided to take a nap. For 8 hours. I woke up in the middle of the night to a bunch of twigs cracking. It turned on my torch to look to see if it was the instructors or any kind of animal. I even called out, hey, you good? Not sure why I said it that way. Nothing. In the morning I found some big cat tracks right by my tent that were not there when I took my nap. It was really unnerving knowing that a mountain lion was near me when I was sleeping. I told the guides about it and they got really particular about keeping our food away from where we were sleeping. I did an outward bound canoe trip in Northern Ontario a few years back. We had a large screen tent that we had nightly meeting in and ate out food if it was buggy. One particular night, there was no storms, no wind, and it was a cloudless sky. We also set it up relatively far away from the shoreline. The next morning when we woke up it was gone. Just disappeared, not in the trees, or in the water. Just gone. Thankfully it was on day 25 of 30, and the rest of the nights were bugless bacuase it was cold. R.I.P. Hutinyani, wherever you are. Also during that same trip, on my solo and each dropped a fish feet from where I was sitting. You better believe I was scared shitless. I was out backpacking in the Rockies a few years back with four other people. We stopped for lunch and sort of spread out to eat. One of the guys wandered about 50 yards away and leaned up against a tree to look out over a ravine while he ate. About 10 minutes later he walked back totally ash-faced. While he was standing there, a mountain lion walked up behind him, rubbed against him like a house cat, then wandered on down the ravine. For most of my young childhood we lived in Angel Fire, New Mexico. My dad and his business partner were known to just throw their sleeping bags in the truck and disappear for a weekend. They wouldn't take tents, sometimes it was in the dead of winter. One particular trip they went right after a huge snowstorm and they built a shelter for themselves and everything. When they woke up the next morning they had mountain lion tracks and some of them were terrifyingly close to my dad's head as if the cat leaned in and smelled him. Scary stuff. So it was checking me out, doing that crazy owl thing with its head rotating all the way around, and I was checking him out, and rotating my head as far as I could. All of the sudden, a large shadow streaked over my head, and the screech owl was gone. Several feathers drifted slowly downward. It was then that I remembered that great horned owls eat screech owls. One had swooped in and snatched that cute little guy right in front of my eyes. What freaked me out the most was that this huge bird, with a 5-foot wingspan, is absolutely dead silent in flight. I basically grew up outside. I don't get scared in the dark. Noises don't bother me. But that silent assassin owl scared the shit out of me. I had to go inside. Edit, one more. A few of us were night fishing for catfish from the bank of the Hocking River. None of us actually heard it but we were all suddenly aware of some presence near us. Naturally we all start asking WTF was that? So, out come the flashlights, and we start looking around. 
We discovered some very large paw prints right behind where we were sitting. I'm not sure what kind of cat it was, but its paws were bigger than my fist. We got the hell out of Dodge. I live in the only house down a country road, everything else is pasture land and national forest for several miles. About 3 AM, my three large dogs go absolutely nuts barking, which sends my husband and I flying out of bed to check on our livestock, assuming coyotes were in the yard. Before we could even get our shoes on, we hear muttering on our front porch. He grabs his rifle and whoever it is starts knocking on the door, with no real urgency but more like a casual visitor. I had my cell phone already dialing the cops, and my husband slid up to the peephole. A woman right around her late 20s early 30s was standing outside, patiently waiting a few minutes and gently knocking on the door, not fidgeting or nervous, not being aggressive. My husband said, ma'am, the cops are on the way. If you need help, they'll be here in just a few minutes and you're welcome to sit on the swing right there and wait on them, but if there's anyone with you, we are armed in here and will not hesitate to shoot if anyone tries getting into this house. He said she kind of smiled, not creepy but like she was glad her knocking woke someone up. That's okay, sir I just wanted to let you know the thing in the woods is coming, and he'll be here soon. Good luck, he said she turned around and walked down the driveway like she hadn't a care in the world. The cops looked all over the place and couldn't find her. It's a 10 minute drive to our driveway from the main road, with no houses until you get into town another 20 minutes away. Freaked me out for weeks. Edit. Tuesday, a neighbor from the next street over asked us if we had any more issues with late night visitors. We told him we hadn't, and he said a girl matching the description we gave them when we asked if anyone knew her knocked on their door over the weekend. He said it was the same, she very calmly knocked, but this time she said she needed help. He told her he'd get the cops and an ambulance for her and he heard a male voice say, no cops. The girl started asking for water, or a phone, or to use the bathroom, at 1 or 2 AM. He kept her talking and luckily there was a cop super close on the highway this time, because they pulled up and caught them. One girl, two guys. They had a car parked down the road a little bit with another girl in the driver's seat. As it turns out, they are wanted for distributing narcotics and selling stolen goods. They've been stealing people's medication. So for those of you voting drug addicts or possible break in, good call. Looks like whatever was in the woods isn't coming after all. I was working at a summer camp and we happened to be on minimal staff that week. That particular day the camp director had left for supplies so after I finished working and had dinner I went to one of the cabins that had a landline to call a friend. Cell phone reception was next to non-existent in that location, we were wedged between a couple of mountains. So it's late twilight, almost nightfall, when I head back to my cabin. As I come around the flagpole I discover I'm not alone, lumbering past the swimming pole is a large black bear. I stop, thinking oh crap. A bear. The bear stops 12 feet away and looks back. I could swear it's thinking oh crap. A human. For a long moment we stand off looking at each other. So I'm shining my flashlight at this wild animal. Totally alone, unarmed. We knew this bear had been visiting our camp because each morning the dumpster was tipped over. It never got into the dumpster, but it tipped it over all the same just to try to get inside. It was making a beeline to the dumpster when we crossed paths. No one had ever seen this animal face to face before. It's about twice my size. So what am I going to do now? At that moment the bear turned and left the camp, walking directly away from me. Years before at a park ranger educational lecture, the advice had been to stand your ground and keep your cool if you end up face to face with a bear. It worked. Don't know if you would call that creepy or mysterious, but it earned massive respect from the kids once the campers arrived. 
Somebody told them that I had driven away a bear by myself and that made me the most badass adult in those kids world. Okay, I'll take that. Not a kid talked back at me all summer. Kept my mouth shut about what I actually thought I had done which was stand shining a flashlight for about 15 seconds feeling like a dumbass because I couldn't think of anything better to do. I was with my family on vacation in the lakes part of southwestern Ontario. Basically BFE with loads of camping and houseboat places for the tourists. My extended family owned camp and houseboat rental company and my folks and some other family were enjoying that connection. I was about 5 years old at the time and was called the scientist because I would study things intensely and was really focused as a child. We were in a cabin coloring while the adults did god knows what, when my mom called the kids back to the houseboat we were staying on. I stayed back until I finished my coloring task and cannot say how long that was. When I realized I was alone I freaked out a bit and headed back to the boat. When I was about halfway from the cabin to the boat I noticed a weird and large tree stump was right off the path that wasn't there before. The tree stump unfolded and stood up to reveal it was in fact a brown bear. I was five and still remember the white bolt of fear that shot through me. I ran, which is stupid, but I ran. I stumbled sobbing onto a boat to find a complete stranger in his tidy whiteies eating a one gallon bag of cherries. I cried bear and the obese underwear clad knight of the Canadian wilderness took arms. He grabbed a cooking pan and spoon and took off cursing and yelling at the bear all the while banging the pan. My entire family came out of the correct houseboat to find me terrified and crying on the shore of underwear night's boat. Still shakes me up to think about and I am 30 years older. This happened once while camping with my then fiancé and a friend of ours. Camped out in the woods in the middle of nowhere on a hot July day. Night came, and it was a full moon so around midnight we decided we'd take a hike around for fun. We basically hiked a trail for a bit and then turned around and hiked it back to the campsite. When we were almost back, we saw a McDonald's cup sitting at the edge of the path. I found this strange as I didn't see the bright red and yellow container when we began the venture, but whatever. However, My buddy decided to open the cup up and found ice cubes at the bottom. That day was easily 90 plus F and at night it was still in the high 70s, so that ice would not have lasted long. Somebody was definitely out there by us and we never found another sign of them. No sound of a car, walking or rustling, nothing. We decided to pack up and go home that night. Three of us were sitting around a campfire on a bluff overlooking Bell Lake in Killarney Provincial Park, when suddenly there was a blinding flash that lit up the entire sky. We were stunned. After several moments of silence, one guy said, everyone check your watches. To this day, none of us have any idea what that flash was, but we all saw it, and it freaked us out pretty good. Another time, I was house sitting for my parents who were traveling overseas. It was maybe 11.30 PM, and I was sitting on the picnic table, smoking a cig, when I heard a screech owl calling. I can do a fairly decent screech owl call, so I started calling it in. After several minutes of back and forth, the owl arrived on a branch about 8 feet above my head. Three of us were sitting around a campfire on a bluff overlooking Bell Lake in Killarney Provincial Park when suddenly there was a blinding flash that lit up the entire sky. We were stunned. After several moments of silence, one guy said, everyone check your watches. To this day, none of us have any idea what that flash was, but we all saw it, and it freaked us out pretty good. Another time, I was house sitting for my parents who were traveling overseas. It was maybe 11.30 PM, and I was sitting on the picnic table, smoking a cig, when I heard a screech owl calling. I can do a fairly decent screech owl call, so I started calling it in. After several minutes of back and forth, the owl arrived on a branch about 8 feet above my head.
I went on a two and a half week long hike in the middle of nowhere Nevada. Like a couple of hours from even the smallest of towns. One night, I decided to set up camp on a ridge line overlooking a valley with a dirt road bisecting it. Most nights I would have had a small fire, but it was breezy and was cutting across the ridge pretty hard. I think the weather saved my life. At about 10 PM, a truck drove down the road and there was a rhythmic pattern of door opens, dome light comes on, driver grabs something from the passenger floorboard, drops it out of the truck, closes the door, drives slowly for 20 seconds, and repeats. He did that for what looked like a mile. I thought it was weird, but whatever. 15 minutes later, a different vehicle, a Suburban, drive up along the road. The driver was holding a flashlight out the window and stopped in the same spots the truck did. Open door. Pick up something. Close door. Drive. Open door. Pick up something. Drive. I don't know what the F it was, but I'm convinced that I would have ended up with a couple more bullets in me than I'd like, if I had that campfire. I was living in a dirt floor cabin for about six months. I would pack a lunch and hike out half a day in random directions. One day I found an abandoned hotel with an attic full of bats. The old kitchen was full of taxidermy. Not abandoned old taxidermy. Current taxidermy, in various states of finish. There was a closet with stacks of dead birds, tools, woodworking tools and glass for the display cases etc. I noped out of there in a hurry. I took my brother there later because he didn't believe me. So I have a witness. More mysterious than creepy. We were camping in Montana near Yellowstone Park in a small campground. It was the off season and there were maybe five other people there including a couple three to four spots down who had a large dog with them in their RV. I walked by and the dog was friendly so I petted it and talked to it and went on my way. Later that night I am sitting watching the sun set and reading on my Kindle when a cold nose bumps up under my arm, like dog does when it wants attention. I figured it was the dog and started scratching its head. Before I could look around, my friend came around the corner and froze with a look of fright on his face. I was scratching the head of a pretty big gray wolf. I had no idea what to do, I didn't want to keep touching it, but I didn't want to stop and piss it off either. I scratched for maybe 5 to 10 more seconds and it just looked at me like, thanks, bro and walked off into the woods. We went to a hotel that night. I was 13 and on a week-long camping trip. There were two adults and five other kids my age. One night we had spent all day kayaking and got caught in a deluge that threw off our whole schedule for the day. We couldn't quite make it to the location where we were supposed to set up camp for the night before sunset so we just settled a few meters off of the river. We were so exhausted that the adults didn't even want to build a fire. Since we didn't have much light and it was hot they told us that we didn't have to build our shelters we could just lay out in our sleeping bags. Everyone put their sleeping bags near a clearing that was created by a fell tree. But I saw the hole created by the roots and thought that there were possible creepy crawlies living in it. So I set my sleeping bag a little further back about 4 meters away from the clearing. I woke up a few hours later to these rapid clicking sounds and sniffing. Thanks to the internet I later identified it as deer noises, there were a bunch of them. The clicking grew closer and was surrounded me on all sides. I had my flashlight but I didn't want to shine it because I was afraid to scare the deer slash creatures because I thought they would trample me. The most vocal deer then stepped on my sleeping bag and eventually sat down on it. I could hear the other deer get comfortable too. After a while I allow myself to peek out not wearing my glasses, and I see maybe 15 deer slash creatures all just watching the other campers. After several hours I fell asleep and woke back up as they were leaving at sunrise. It was wholesome slash creepy.
My friends and I were at a state park campground back in November. We were sitting around the fire talking and drinking and one of my friends got out of his chair to grab something from our tent a few yards away. When he turned around out of the chair he ran into a deer. Like physically ran into it. There were a few of them right behind our chairs and we hadn't even heard them snake up behind us. My friend yelled in panic and the deer freaked out and they all bolted off. The rest of us thought it was hilarious. Van camping one night in Australia. In the middle of nowhere, in the back country of Queensland, Affer. 30 miles of winding mountain road from the next Seoul, there's this strange basin, one mile long by half a mile wide, surrounded by unpassable cliffs. A tepwi in reverse, if you can imagine that. Like a huge sinkhole with pretty good camping grounds in the middle. Fresh grass, trees, shade during the day. Very nice place. At night almost everybody had left, it was the quietest place I'd ever been. Quieter even than the Sahara. Around 2 am, I need to pee. I silently get up and out of the van, careful not to wake my girlfriend up. For the same reason, I use no light, stumble a few feet in the grass and think that right there is as good a place as any other to go wee wee. While I'm doing my thing, I vacantly stare into the black nothingness of a totally moonless night. There's something wrong. I am not alone. I don't see, I sense, living creatures around me. Tall, human-like creatures, immobile yet unmistakably alive, breathing, waiting, watching me. Hundreds of them. I freeze. Wait a few seconds, listen, not moving a hair. Yeah, I'm right. I'm surrounded by what can only be 300 evenly spaced humanoids, filling all the space hundreds of feet around me, or statues. But no, they're not statues, they live. I can feel their immobile tension, like a super subtle vibration, I can feel them breathing, some of them seem to be gnawing on something. By then my eyes have accommodated to the light coming from the stars. The whole camp is filled with hundreds of kangaroos. That reminds me of a time in South Dakota when my friend and I were camping in a tent in his front yard. We were in out sleeping bags and heard noises all around us and got scared as hell. We flipped our flashlights on, and all of a sudden this thing was poking inside the side of he tent. It was just pushing on the side of he tent and we couldn't tell what the hell it was but we knew we were scared. My friend, with bare feet, decided to be brave and he kicked the shit out of the thing poking in. The minute his bare foot connected he screamed in pain and we heard the thing running away. We ran inside the house and grabbed his airsoft rifle and a big sword after that. We played enough James Bond and Lord of the Rings, we knew what we were doing. We sat and guarded our tent with a flashlight while the damn deer stared at us from the tree line. You could see their eyes all night. My parents bought a house in the mountains near National Forest Land around the time I was in ninth grade. I loved the woods and nature, so I would sneak out at night and walk through the forest all the time. A winter night in a forest in northern Utah is amazing. They can also be terrifying. I later learned to identify some of the more common animal calls and cries, but at the time I knew nothing about any of that. So as I'm wandering alone through this forest one time I heard the most blood-curdling and terrifying scream I have ever heard. I froze the second I heard it, lowered to the ground and didn't move for what seemed like forever. Eventually I heard some quiet scuffling and turned to see a fox run across the dry riverbed near where I was. Scared the absolute shit out of me. If you've never heard a fox cry, it is the scream of nightmares. You see all kinds of cool stuff in the forest if you can be slow and quiet. I was a forest fire lookout in the summers during college. Went weeks between seeing another human sometimes. 
Some of the things I witnessed or heard while doing that job are just flat unexplained. The one that most sticks out in my mind was laying in bed and watching a strange light move through the trees. Figured it was a car with headlights in until it went vertical up into the air and hung for 30 minutes just sitting 20 to 30 miles away, about parallel with my tower. I was at an elevation of 7,000 feet I watched it until it dipped back below the trees and never saw it again. At the time I was super creeped out, but chalked it up to the another one of those dozens of things I've seen that I couldn't explain and no one would believe. But the next day another lookout called me on the radio asking if I'd seen the same light. He was much closer to but on the other side of it. He said from his perspective, after it dipped below the trees, it landed in an area he knew to be a lake that was only accessible by hiking or horseback. It stood out in my mind because it was the only strange light that summer we couldn't explain away by either planes, balloons or tricks of light from cars. I have since wondered if this was a drone, but this was before they were really obtainable to hobbists and have never seen one with lights that could be seen that bright from 20 miles or one that will hold a hover for 30 minutes that was around then. I saved the best for last. The lake where that light settled down into according to the other lookout, is pretty popular spot for trout fishing. That summer the lake developed some form of algae or something and all the fish died off. They stocked it with fish and they just keep dying off. No one remembers this happening before that summer we saw the light land in it. It was like this for the next three summers that I came back as a lookout. No fish could live in it. Just another weird story from my early 20s as a fire lookout. In one of the towers I worked on I was stationed pretty close to a guard station, where they stationed a crew of firefighters so they could get a good jump on the fires instead of drive an hour from town to get out there. I used to go down and visit them, shower, get my fill of TV and head back up. I did a fair amount of driving on the small dirt road that led to that guard station. But one night I somehow took a wrong turn without remembering that I'd even made a turn. Having driven that road dozens of times in that night, I kept waiting for a particular turn to show up, one that was fairly sharp and uphill, so it had to be taken slow. It never came. I drove for maybe five more minutes, thinking that maybe in the dark it looked differently and I just hadn't gotten there yet. I finally came upon a meadow I'd never seen before. I turned around and headed back and after a drive of 10 more minutes I hit the main gravel road that would take me back into town if I made a right turn, or to my lookout if I went left. I was completely puzzled because it was the correct road, but the turn never came. I decided not to try it again and called the firefighters on the radio and told them not to expect me that night. Turning left onto the gravel road, I headed back to my lookout. To this day, I honestly don't know how I got lost, but I drove that road again many times, taking small side trails to find that meadow again and I never did. I could have sworn I stayed on the main dirt road and didn't turn off either. I'd heard of this phenomena about being in the forest, especially at night and always thought I had a great sense of direction, but that night, something went really wonky and I was way off course, driving a well-known road and ended up somewhere I was never able to find again. I used to spend a lot of time hiking solo. The creepiest thing I ever saw was another human, in camouflaging clothes, hiding off the edge of a trail in the brush and trees and obviously keeping an eye on anyone who happened by. Edit to add, this wasn't in an area where hunting is allowed, just a county area with some hiking slash biking trails, and lots of spots to go off trail, and he wasn't fishing. Here, there is just a few meters of dense brush and trees between me and the river. I pretended I didn't see him, walked a bit, pulled out my phone, called someone, and stayed on the phone until I was near people. Until then, I was always pretty comfortable by myself in the woods for hours, now I carry a quality knife. Just not knowing is enough to creep me out. Edit 2, Clarity and. I can shoot, actually a gunnery sergeant taught me to be a decent shot. 
I don't have anything against the proper use of guns, hunting for sport slash people isn't cool in my humble opinion. I prefer not to own one for personal reasons. Reminds me of a story I have. Still makes me jitter thinking about it. I was smoking weed with my buddies in high school and a coyote kept howling, which was uncommon but not unheard of for the forest. We sat there for an hour or two blazing and kept hearing the howling. Finally, being super stoned I dozed off and was just daydreaming staring at a bush slash dead tree area. That's when another howl happens, except this time I'm looking in that direction and notice it's not a coyote but a man lying in the dirt for hours under this bush less than 70 feet away from us howling. He noticed me notice him so he got up and came towards us, and it was one of the most unverving conversations. I got a big stick before he got close just in case but he was visibly crazy. He was shaking and asked us what we were doing, and we told him we were just chilling and asked him what the hell he was doing in the bush howling. He gave us a dead blank stare and then walked away with no answer. Creepy. I now carry an extendo everywhere I go even though it's illegal. I would prefer a gun but that's way too illegal here. I don't spend much time in seclusion, but I still have a story. I live in rural Ohio. One of my friends owns a nice barn and farmhouse out in the sticks where the buses don't run and there's no service. He doesn't actually live there, his family owns the house for shiggles. They're millionaires. We've never ran there and it's pretty scenic woods so we decided we'd give it a shot. He and I ran cross country and our team went to state that year to run so we were in really good shape. We get to his barn and plan on running 8 miles near a road and then through the woods. We have GPS watches so we can just make our own path and either turn back at 4 miles or make a looping path if we so desire. After about 2 miles of running on the road we took a random gravel road through the woods and there was a hiking path through it so we decided to take it. We live in the country so it really isn't a big deal, we've done this sort of thing before. I've gotten lost in the woods and in runs a few times throughout high school. But we had never done it here so far away from home. I don't run with my glasses on and I'm blind as a bat. I'm making good pace when all of a sudden I smack into my friend. I look up, and he's just standing there. I focus at what he's looking at and there's bear trap hanging on a branch in front of us. Looking around, they're more, all blowing in the breeze. Off in the middle perched up against tree was something that resembled a man. My friend pushed me and told me to run. We didn't say a word until we got back to the main road because we ran so fast. Turns out my friend saw what looked like a bloody scarecrow leaning against the tree. He saw bear traps on the ground, too. It didn't happen to me, but the same friend that owns the house told me a weirder story. Like I said the house is way out in the sticks. His uncle came to the house one day to work on the farm and such. This was in the 1990s, if I remember correctly. Anyway the uncle worked on the farm some and then just piddled around the house. He camped outside on the property a ways from the house, like 5 acres, and I shot but over a hill. He was into the outdoors in their nice woods. He woke up before daybreak to screaming one night in machinery. He got up and chased horrific noises. He ran towards the barn and the pasture to figure out what it was. It was screaming mixed with machinery. He wasn't sure, but it sounded like a chainsaw. When he got to the scene, there was a homeless man that had stolen a chainsaw and was using it to kill a cow. The man had cut into the cow's neck and the poor thing was still running for it. I didn't want to use this as my original story since it didn't happen to me. I camped by myself in northern Minnesota by boat. Found my spot but saw an unidentifiable creepy blob underwater. Set up my tent etc, 
Went fishing but curiosity lead me to the blob again and I finally figured out it was a large dead deer contorted and missing its abdomen. Later I noticed bark scraped off tree about 8 feet up, bare sign. It was getting dark. I cleaned the fish on a rock down a ways from the tent, came back and had dinner. But there was another oddity. About 100 plus yards out on the water there were two other fishermen sitting in a boat. They never seemed to move or talk even as it got darker. I watched them while I ate realizing that if I slept, they could quietly approach, steal my boat and I would be absolutely messed with no cell reception. When it was completely dark a couple times I shined my flashlight out there but couldn't see or hear them. It was a long night and the last time I camped alone. A time in South Dakota when my friend and I were camping in a tent in his front yard. We were in out sleeping bags and heard noises all around us and got scared as hell. We flipped our flashlights on, and all of a sudden this thing was poking inside the side of he tent. It was just pushing on the side of he tent and we couldn't tell what the hell it was but we knew we were scared. My friend, with bare feet, decided to be brave and he kicked the shit out of the thing poking in. The minute his bare foot connected he screamed in pain and we heard the thing running away. We ran inside the house and grabbed his airsoft rifle and a big sword after that. We played enough James Bond and Lord of the Rings, we knew what we were doing. We sat and guarded our tent with a flashlight while the damn deer stared at us from the tree line. You could see their eyes all night. I was in a remote area surveying populations of various organisms in mountain streams. One morning an older man crossed the stream I was standing in. We both froze for a second and he continued on his way. He didn't have any gear with him and it's a 15 to 20 mile hike from the nearest, dirt, road. My point is he wasn't just casually wandering through. Like some kind of a ghost. My great uncle worked as a night guard or watchman or something at a storage warehouse for an airport in the UK, many decades ago, and it wasn't uncommon for them to have animals passing through. He used to be very fond of dogs and actually kept a lead, leash, and collar so he could get them out for walks whilst he did his rounds. So one night a grey German shepherd was waiting in a cage in the warehouse. He fed it some corned beef sandwiches and, as it seemed friendly, he decided to get it out for a walk. Took it on his round so that it could stretch its legs and then put it back in the cage later. Later found out that it was actually a timber wolf being shipped to a zoo. So my great uncle accidentally took a timber wolf for a walk. Apparently it was quite chilled out and well behaved. I was sleeping in my house in Yorkshire when I awoke to the screaming ghost of a murdered child. It just sliced right through me, but right as I decided I dreamt that I heard it again, close. Got my flashlight and went outside, right next to my window as a good sized screech owl. Didn't seem to mind me shining a light on him either, but he did when I threw a stick in his direction. I'd about soiled myself. My dad used to work for dispatch and heard a lot of different stories from all the law enforcement there. His favorite he liked to retell was about a game warden who caught two guys illegally hunting and killing a deer and then stashing the deer in some bushes to come and pick up after dark. So naturally the guy climbs in the bushes with the deer and waits till nightfall for the men to come back. So imagine the men's surprise when they reach into the bushes to pull out the deer and get a hand wrapping around their wrist instead. My old college campus has a few buildings spread over a lot of property right next to a forest that borders a river. Walking back from a late class by myself at night, I was startled when I heard what sounded like a young woman screaming help. I froze, Heard it again several times, 
and was about to go into the woods to see what was going on, when a baby fox poked its head above a berm and made the same cry. Creepy as hell, and a major adrenaline shot. 